Lay hold of it. You lay hold of it. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. Some of you are so ignorant. You've been through so much hell. You gonna quit now? You should have quit 10 years ago when you got raped. You should have quit 10 years ago when he walked out on you. You should have been quit. You don't quit now, it's the 10th round. You got two more to go. And when you get to success, it's not about skill. When you get to a certain level of success, it's about stamina. It's about stamina. It's about, you won't break me. You can't take me. It's too late. You should have broke me a long time ago. I'm unbreakable now. My legacy will be. I'm at legacy point, y'all. fam i hope everybody's having a blessed day out there so today's video is all about mr hanky the turd this is the dakota that we pulled out of the woods and the weeds a few months back literally as you've seen we dragged it out of the woods with a skid steer loaded up on the trailer and the plan for this truck was we were going to do a hemi swap with a tomahawk cam from flying ryan which we already have that motor put together we got the cam put in it and everything but we've been waiting on long tube headers for the swap from holly they've been on back order literally for over a year and we are still waiting on them right now so we decided long story short we started tearing into the truck we got with flying ryan currently in the truck that was supercharged we was going to try to get it running, resurrect it, see if we could make this truck move, drive, do anything, and possibly take it to Mo Party. As the plan was to take the truck to Mo Party with the Hemi swap, I want to give Ryan a huge thanks for getting this truck running. This truck has been nothing but, I guess, a nightmare in the past for the last 10 years from previous owners that's owned it. Uh, they work on it. Uh, and, and I, I don't know, I guess the truck just never really worked. I have no idea, but we ended up with a truck. Ryan, uh, wanted to try to tune this thing. So I hit him up and we got the tuning on it after we got the truck running. Um, to get the truck running, obviously we had to get all the fuel out of this thing. We had a tremendous wiring nightmare like I've never seen before. Um, the wiring job on this thing was absolutely a wreck. It was insane. Um, whoever was working on this truck, built this truck, there was literal, there was wires going to the computer that literally had three or four different kind of connections to the same wire. Like a butt connector, a half-ass soldering with a crimp, and then wires literally twisted together. Like it was the biggest mess of joke I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, but long story short, we found some wires that was just obviously not getting a connection um we rewired everything quickly and uh we was able to actually start the truck and run it now the truck ran like complete dog doo-doo because the current tune that was in the truck was not uh was just not getting it done um it looked like there were some injectors being swapped out in it who knows if the injectors were updated in the tuning or what kind of tuning was even done with this thing period have no idea so after we got this truck at least started and running, I sent Ryan a message that, hey, the truck's running. This 4.7 may actually make it to Mo Party. I don't know, depending on, you know, how it how it uh, how it works out. It's not idling very good. It's not responding to throttle very good, but it is running. And uh, he calls me right up on the phone and said, hey, you want to tune this Dakota? 
And I was like, hell yeah. So I ran in the house, we got the laptop, went out to the truck and literally started uh, doing some logging, uh, loading in tunes. We did uh, two or three tunes that night and got the truck to where it idled very well. Um, you could actually hit the gas pedal and it would rev up pretty good. So next day we uh, go out, drive the truck out on the street and it's driving very well. We're going through the gears. Uh, we're actually ripping on it pretty good. My brother-in-law and our worst nightmare literally happened. Um, in the middle of a pull and I think it was like third gear, we just lost basically all drivability. It just, it was completely neutraled out, wouldn't move at all. We're in the middle of the road, dead. Uh, we have a running engine, but no moving whatsoever. Um, every time we was trying to put it in gear, it was grinding. Didn't know what happened. We thought maybe, I don't know, maybe we blew the transmission. Maybe we broke the clutch, throw, uh, throw out bearing, fork, slave cylinder, something. It was dead in the water, sitting on the side of the road. Pushed the truck off the side of the road, went home, got my big truck. We dragged it back with a strap. Keep in mind, guys, this is two days now. This is two days until we have to leave the Mo Party to go all the way to Kentucky from Georgia to Mo Party. Two days. So we're like, and it's, it's about nine o'clock right now at night. It's dark. And we're like, well, I guess we're dead. This truck's not going to make it to Mo Party. Um, so we were just about to give up. And we said, you know what? Let's pull it up on car ramps. So we pulled it in the, into my little garage outside, put it on car ramps, got all the lights out. Within about 10 or 15 minutes, we were pretty sure that we lost a clutch, fork, or throw out bearing. The slave cylinder was working perfectly. Um, the transmission was shifting into the gears, but we were not disengaging somehow from the engine. When we tried to push in the clutch, it just wasn't happening. We were like, all right, transmission's going to come down. All there is to it. So it's make it or break it. We either try to drop the transmission, see if it's something fixable, or we're dead in the water and, it's just, and the truck's just going to stay here and it's not going to make it a mo party. So that night, within about three to four hours, I think me and my brother-in-law, Ripped the transmission out on the ground, on our backs, on car ramps, cold concrete, in the dark. It sucked. And uh, not even, <laughs> you're, you're not going to believe this, but it makes sense. The truck had sat in the woods for God knows how long. And when we pulled the transmission down, the first thing we noticed is there was a huge rat nest inside the bell housing of the transmission. Well, where did that rat nest go? After we started driving this thing on the road for a little bit, it went into our clutch. There was rat nest and just crap all entangled into the clutch, all wrapped up in the disc, all wrapped up in the barren. It was a, it was a friggin' nightmare. Um, long story short though, the clutch was done. Uh, the clutch was wasted. There was pieces of it broke off because of all that material uh, that got in there. So we felt kind of good at least. It was just gonna need a clutch, but there was no way we were going to get a heavy duty clutch in time uh, to be able to make it a mo party. So the next morning we went to AutoZone and we bought the only clutch they had in stock and we put it in the next day and literally put the transmission back together and the truck ran, drove, shifted, and we loaded on the trailer. And uh, the next morning we hightailed it up to mo party and the truck did actually very, very well considering it has a lot more issues like it's smoking uh, we're pretty sure the valve seals are cooked or something's not right with those um, as it's when, when it starts to get warm it's smoking and it is burning a little oil you can smell it but it runs and drives and it, and it did pretty dang good guys um, it made it through test and tune on friday and all day saturday uh, we probably put six or seven, maybe eight passes on Mr. Hankey, and it held together. And the next day on Sunday, when the racing was actually going down um, on one of the practice runs, the AutoZone clutch we put in decided it was not going to hang on anymore, and it actually grenaded. Uh, the clutch grenaded into pieces. There was parts of it falling out of the bottom of the uh, bell housing. So... Our clutch did not hold together the entire trip, but it did make it there. We did get to enjoy the truck for a couple days. Again, it's my brother-in-law's truck, 
and he hasn't been drag racing in probably a decade let alone in a stick shift vehicle so it was a complete learning curve for him to one even be on the track and two trying to shift gears so it was interesting he had fun though and mr hanky the turd it made it to mo party we got some passes done so again we got to thank flying ryan tremendously for even getting this thing somewhat tuned to be usable um again thank you thank you that was awesome so there's definitely going to be more videos coming on mr hanky um but since this clutch grenaded and a stick shift honestly is just kind of a no-go um for drag racing in my eyes so we're not going to try to leave this five-speed transmission in the truck one it's not going to hold to a bunch of power anyway it's basically a stock transmission i mean a 727 is just going to be i think smarter for what the truck's going to be for later on down the road so that's the plan the transmission we're going to take it out we're going to 727 swap it um especially when we have, whenever we get our long tubes to be able to put the hemi in it that we have um definitely going to be 727 swap no more five speed no more clutches none of that garbage so stay tuned uh whenever we get some more parts to come in and we can work on the truck that is going to be going down anyways guys that's it enjoy some of the video clips of mr hanky